uh, before our project pitch, I want to use a few minutes to share some useful information with you. So first, uh, I have mentioned that this book can be downloaded by yourself and uh, create a PDF using some tools. But I found that someone did it already. So if you would like, you can just click the link and then download the PDF. It is well organized. Then uh, please download the grade sheet from our assignment. Uh, then please fill in your scores from 1 to 100. And uh, after downloading the Word file, you will see a few instructions and the checkpoints, which is help to uh, help you fill in the scores. Okay, so how um, clearness of the pages and uh, how do you feel about its quality? And please keep in mind, this is a research-oriented uh, term project. So I expect that you show how we will do research, not just uh, implement something. Okay. In addition, there are four competitions I show them in the announcement. Now you are team members and you have topics, and the topic is AI related. So it's your opportunity. If you are interested in participating in those um, competitions, and in the best case, you can win some prize. All right, so now I will uh, <clears throat> uh, stop here. And uh, the fir our first group is the one with the title of uh, Social Distance uh, Detection. Okay. So from this paper, there is an interesting figure. This is the number of numbers of papers published addressing the same problem from 2010 to 2019 and so 18 okay so this is a research area there are researchers consistently working for this topic so for the group who is interested in this topic there are many papers in the history, in the literature you can survey. Okay. And then let's take a look in this paper. So ask yourself a few questions. Did they release some data set? If there are, then it will be very useful for you. You can just use their data set. You don't need to spend the time and effort to compile a new data set. And then take a few figures. Okay, for example, if they use a fixed camera to do their research, then could you improve it? Say, I remember they mentioned that they want to use a cell phone. Of course, it will be a more convenient uh, camera rather than every, uh, so it looks like uh, here, looks like a lamp, and uh, if you can do the same thing using your cell phone under different uh, lighting conditions. Then it will be an improvement uh, than the paper because the research published in this paper, they use a fixed camera and it may be a high quality camera. I am not sure. But you need to check uh, the details in the paper. Okay. And, uh, okay, I. I am not sure what the figure show. Maybe their camera can change the viewing angle. I'm not sure. You need, if you are interested in the topic, you need to do start uh, to read the paper yourself. And uh, they also mentioned ultrasound and uh, infrared. It's very interesting. Okay, they, they 
use different uh, uh, light okay, camera because ultrasound and infrared camera must be different from the uh, cell phone. It is because our cell phone only capture the visible spectrum. And uh, but uh, okay, this is interesting, right? Characteristics of data sets. So there are they mentioned those data sets. This is published in 2003, 17, 18, 16. Okay, so there are at least seven different data sets that you can use. Okay, for the group of uh, fruit uh, inspection, right? Okay, and the pre-processing. Et cetera. Okay, it looks like a long paper. However, I want to uh, show you the information. This is a beginning point. Once you use Google Scholar or any kind of search engines to find related papers, then you can understand that at first. Ask you a few questions. What can I improve? Can I use their method on different data sets? So do they um, use fruit available in Taiwan? Uh, I don't know. So, but there are research directions you can uh, pursue. All right. So let's go to another topic. So let's, this is fruit. Okay. All right. Okay. For Yolo V4 group. Okay. I watched the video. Um. I want to. Introduce this research. So, the history is YOLO, YOLO V1, and YOLO, YOLO V1, YOLO V2, and YOLO V3 were published from the same team. And, but however, the first author, I, I, I forgot his name, let's check it. Ah, for, oh, and uh, he didn't want to continue the YOLO development. So, in his project, YOLO V3 is the latest version. And the YOLO V4, okay, the project uh, was um, initialized by uh, Professor Liao. And Professor Liao is the director of uh, Information Science Institute at Academia Sinica. Okay. So, but he was the uh, uh, primary investigator. The real development, uh, w development worker was done by another um, doctor, Wang, Wang Jianyao. Oh, yes. So this video is the uh, explanation how Dr. Wang Jianyao collaborated with, because there are three if you, oh, okay, I remember YOLO V4 is just an archive paper. It uh, has not been published in any computer vision conference because it is still under development. Every few months, they will add a few, some features or just uh, improve the performance. And uh, in this video, they explain why and how they did it. Okay, but uh, however, this talk was given in Chinese. <laughs> Let me see whether they can generate the English capitals. Uh, no, oh, there's no way to generate English. Okay, so let's just take a few shots. He will know that this is fake, and then he will know that it will pass. This is this is called a print attack. 然后另外一种 attack 叫 mobile attack， 就是你拿着手机，拿着手机用那个照片 ，all right， and then 做出来了。所以现在我最主要的部分当然请那个呃王建阳王博士接下来介绍。Professor Liao will 好，嗯，那个谢谢廖所长哈。其其实所长其实把这个这个在 AI AI 计划里面的。这个四年期的计划，其实是讲用很短的时间讲得很清楚哈，花了一个延伸。那 OK， and then he will explain very very deep details about the YOLO V4 嘛。各位好，那我今天要报告的内容就是 YOLO V4 的技术深入与未来方向。
什么是呃 object detection 的技术，所以我会介绍我们在设有有蛮多方法，它是使用呃我们目标 inst 的把 object 的 center 呃产生这样的效果，造成我们的一个问题，因为它就会 n 减一这一个 layer 嘛。可是，因为它现在变成是像 r e c i v e Net 或 Dense Net， 它都是把它加在一起或 Concat 在一起，所以它这个 Gradient 会同时传到所有的 Layer， 就是它会同时传给它，同时传给它，也同时传给它。那所以我们就会发现说，哎，我不管是产生 X1 的 Convolution Filter、X2 的 Convolution Filter， 或者是产生 Xn 减一的 Convolution Filter， 它都受到相同的 Gradient 驱动来做。它的权重更新。But I don't know what's the difference between Euro V4 and Euro V7. I I really don't don't understand it. So for the group who want to use Euro V4, ah,、uh, I really wish they can tell me what's the difference, what's the improvement from Euro V4 and Euro V7, and what's the. I think I remember there are other versions. Five, six, eight, ten, twelve. Your X. Oh, developed by which team? No problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. Okay. So, <clears throat> from there is also an interesting question. There is a background survey. Okay. If you want to use Euro V4, fine. But why not the Euro 7 and 8 or 10? Oh, what's the difference? What's the pros and cons of those models? And、uh, since we are going to do research, so let's figure it out.、Okay. And so, of course, I also want to know another question. I remember the best、uh, advantage of Euro is it can run very, very fast, generate the real-time feedback from your image input. But this is still a generic、uh, object detection model. So, do we have other choices? I want to know the answer, but.、Uh, Um, as you say, if the group can answer the question, it would be great. Okay, or if you want to publish a paper, or if there is you are you want to、uh, participate in some competition, and the judges may ask you the same question, then how would you answer? Okay. So I'm not sure. Let's try. I I'm not sure whether there are some、uh, pedestrian detection algorithm. So let's try Google Scatter. Google Scatter and pedestrian、uh, detection. Okay. Let's try what we will see. And if, let's see some new papers. Twenty. Twenty. Okay, very new. Let's see. Deep learning based pedestrian detection in oh, this is from autonomous vehicles. Okay, so this is also an interesting research topic. And、uh, okay, occlusion entering and multi scale based. On, okay, a review. Oh, review paper is good.、Okay. So where? Was it published? Let's click and see. Okay, from this third, it is a lidar camera fusion. So, uh, if you want to do social distance detection, 
you can use not only your uh, RGB camera, you can use also other devices. So this will also be a research direction. Okay. Whoa. Well, it doesn't work. Okay, fine. So I want to sh tell you the information. This is the starting point. Using some search engine tools, you can find a lot of papers related to your research topic. And you can then try to find opportunities for your um, research direction and uh, term project. And okay, so there's another way. You are going to implement a social detection system. So are you sure vision is the best uh, method? Maybe, maybe not. So try to use social distance detection, the keyword, and uh, let's see whether we can find. So not definition, so the section. Okay, there are some social detection related papers. Mm, real time social distance detection. Okay, try this. It's a real time social distance detection and use deep learning. And uh, let's see what the paper talks about. Oh, okay, see, from the abstract, you can see the motivation is almost the same as yours. They want to help people keep social distance during the COVID-19 period. Why is it so slow? <laughs> I really have no idea why it is so slow. Ooh, okay. Could we just see this abstract and uh, okay. Okay, let's see our abstract. So, ooh. it also use YOLO V3. Hmm? So it's the paper. Uh, I mean. I'm not sure, but however, since you are going to detect a social distance and uh, you are going to use YOLO V3, so I I think you can take a look of this paper. So this is so close to your 
uh, motivation and uh, your approach. Okay. And from this paper, this where is it published? Up. It's very. It's a very new paper, just published last year. Okay. So there are maybe a lot of references, so you can take a look. Okay. Right. Okay. Oh, this is the uh, Yolo V8, V7, V3, V4. Uh, okay, so there are a lot of online resources for you to figure out uh, the differences between those models. Okay, okay for the uh, sign translation project, uh, I I found the website, the sign.mt. It can, uh, okay, so there's a problem of my uh, laptop is a building camera. But if you can connect it to this website, try it by yourself. Okay. If you so, it's supposed to turn on your camera, and if you do some sign uh, language in front of your camera, then it will automatically translate it into text. So at least uh, there is a system, an existing system in the world that do in the same thing. So if you are going to do research, then think about what can you improve it, okay? Or what is the limitation of this um, system, okay? What is the models or technologies they use and uh, how to do is it better? Or can you use their technology and models and apply to other uh, data sets? Okay. For example, I think they don't have, they only have the, uh, so this is American Sign Language, and this is German Sign Language. I'm not sure what is the uh, flag, and uh, I'm, I'm not sure, okay. All right, okay, fine. So if there is no sign language translation for the sign language used in Taiwan, okay, this will be an opportunity for you, but I don't know whether there is or not, okay? You you can figure it out by yourself, okay? Uh -huh. And however, this is the implemented uh, website, uh, and uh, for the academic uh, viewpoint, uh, so what are the state of the art method for sign language translation? Okay, so can we do, okay. Again, we can use IEEE Explorer, Google Scholar, or ACN uh, digital library to do. So this is a paper, research for a sign language translation system based on deep learning. It was published in, okay, four, four years ago. So it is, Okay, so maybe there are some more uh, recently published paper. Uh, this is the beginning point. If you are going to study the topic of sign language translation, okay, take a look what has been done in the literature. Okay, okay. for the face recognition uh, group, okay, Face recognition is always a very uh, active research topic. So from CPR this year, those paper was just published. Search uh, from this open access website and uh, key in the keyword face recognition and click the search. It will show a lot of papers. And uh, if we use the Chrome search text box and there are a few face recognition papers. So uh, one, two, three. So this is the low resolution. This, this is 3D face recognition. And uh, oh, this is attack and uh, biologically inspired. Mm. Yeah, many, many related papers. So if you are going to do 
face recognition, there are still a lot of opportunities. Okay? If you are going to do illumination related uh, face recognition problem, so let's see what uh, we can find. Okay. Uh, first of all, there is a data set called Carnegie Mellon University Multi Pi Face Recognition Data Set. It's a very large data set. Uh, the size around, I forget, 600 giga or 700 giga. It's quite large. Okay, and then there, it consists of images and the videos. So it's very interesting because they build up a machine. Okay, so somebody sits in the center, and then there are more than 30 or 40 lamps uh, around the uh, subject from different directions. And then in addition to the lamps, there are many different cameras. They will take shots of the subject at the same moment. Okay, so the multiply means multiple posts illumination and the expression. Okay. So I have the data set because um, one of my paper was based on the data set. If you are interested, I can share the data set with you for free. Okay. And then you have a very large data set with different uh, illumination and a different uh, subject, uh, different uh, pose, different uh, expression. Okay. And uh, interesting, there are four, the data set was built up for different seasons because they want to um, test aggregate, not just for one day. They just, they want to test the, uh, the, the aggregate for, for a, uh, the specific uh, time of differences because for just a few weeks later, some, someone's hair becomes longer, someone removes their uh, uh, mustache, or et cetera. So there's a change of the appearance. And of course, we need to figure out what are the state of the art methods for the problem. So if we use the keyword, Illumination invariant face recognition. Okay, we can find them. I, 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 let's try. I'm not sure. Okay, so this is a paper. And, uh, okay, if I download the paper, so it was published in uh, four years ago in WACB. Okay. Uh, so let's take a look. What is they? Illumination invariant uh, face recognition with deep relight fast image. So what's the relight? I I'm not sure. I don't know what is the relight. This sounds like they can use if neural network was to to change the illumination. I'm not sure. Okay, so let's take a look at what it uh, uh, did. So what is in okay, this is face Relighting, so this is normal share shading, a battle mask, and the new shaded relight image. Okay, this sounds like it can use neural network to create face images by some virtual light sources. Okay, so this is also a research direction if you are interested. If there is an existing method to create virtual light sources, then how to do face recognition under those conditions? It will be also interesting. And how, okay, since uh, this paper was published in 2019, so I guess there will be some new papers such as this paper. And uh, if you are going to do research, uh, figure it out, but figure then out. Okay, so it will be your uh, opportunity to uh, improve them or um, try their method on different uh, data sets. Okay. All right, so uh, so let's my 
let's go back to my conclusion. I think you are potential. You uh, want to do research, and uh, if you do it well, it can be your master thesis. Okay, then you can graduate uh, smoothly. <laughs> okay. Then okay, now uh, that's the end of our project uh, pitch. So let's go back to our lecture. Okay, so I want to show a few uh, key points of Justin Johnson's lecture too. The video is online available. And uh, you can watch it, no problem. And but it takes your time. Okay, so for lecture two, it uh, uh, requires uh, one hundred and five minutes. If you have time, do it. It you will get a lot of knowledge from the high quality lecture. I, I think his English is much better than mine, <laughs> and uh, his the slides uh, are also uh, better than mine. Okay. So in this lecture, he talks about the uh, Kenyanist neighbor. Okay, so what is Kenyanist neighbor? It's just, it is a method you can do classification without any parameters. So it's easy to use. This figure is cropped from your textbook. So it means given some existing uh, instances for example in this figure there are three classes uh, triangle square and a circle then give a new instance here then suppose we use one nearest neighbor it will look for in the feature space which one is the closest one to the given instance so in this case the star will be classified as the circle class. Okay. But if we change the number of K, in this case, it's a nine nearest neighbor, then it will ask the nine neighbors, okay, and uh, vote, which is the most uh, highly frequency occurred patterns. So in this case, it will be the square class. If it's a further increase, the number of k in this case is 25, and okay, they will ask uh, those neighboring methods, and it is still class of square. Okay, okay so let's show another case. So, uh, in this figure, it shows more k. So, there are only two classes in this uh, training examples the blue and the orange ones. So from K to one, from one, two, three, four, five, six, ten, twelve, and uh, no, 20 and 15, okay? It show AV point, for example here, AV point here, and what will the instance be classified? That it use different colors to label that. And from this one to fifty, you can see a um, a trend. If we use very small k, our result might be very noisy. Okay. If we use very large k, then for some regions here, for the two regions, it was uh, okay diluted by the training instances. So in this case, we might think, okay, the number of K is 20 is the best result. But however, the problem is how do we determine the number of K? So we don't know. K becomes a tricky parameter or tricky hyperparameter for the k nearest neighbor methods. If you are going uh, in 
your reference book, uh, the K nearest neighbor was uh, is mentioned uh, in section five point seven point three. It's uh, just a uh, one uh, two pages to describe. Uh, so for the book, it is a very high level introduction to deep learning. But in Justin Johnson's lecture, he spent one hour to talk about the uh, details about the uh, Kenyanese neighbor method. So it's up to you. If you have time, you can learn a lot of uh, knowledge from Justin Johnson's lectures. If you just want to grab the concept, you can read this paper or your textbook. Okay. So, okay. We say K nearest neighbor is going to find the nearest external example, but what does the, does it mean nearest? If you say this distance, okay, how do you design or define the distance? So there are at least two different definitions for distance: the L1 known or L2 known. So L1 distance has another name for the Ma Manhattan distance because what in New York City, in the Manhattan area, okay, there are a lot of blocks. There are horizontal and uh, vertical streets and uh, roads to separate those regions. So we calculate the distance by computing the only one direction or one dimension distance and uh, sum them up. So this is called Manhattan distance. And uh, the L2 distance or L2 known is the Euclidean distance. It is a uh, distance we are very familiar with for a plan. Okay, so for the circle, okay, every point from the uh, on the circle has the same L2 distance from the origin of the plan. And in this case, the same, every point on the square has the same distance from the origin. Okay, for image, now how to calculate the, the uh, L1 distance? Okay, it's given an input uh, or test the image, and uh, there are many training images, and take, just take one. The L1 distance means you subtract uh, pixel by pixel and uh, calculate the absolute value of the distance and sum them up. So this is the L1 distance. Okay. So for L2, it's the similarly, just you subtract the pixel by pixel and the square is up and the, uh, again, sum it up and take it a square root. All right, so you will go into train a uh, neural network in your homework three. And uh, there is a fundamental question, how do you decide Given a uh, data set, what will be a fair method to split the data set to train your model and uh, verify the model on the remaining set? So there is a, or if you use everything to train your data set, you will have no, okay, no clean test set because your model see every instances in from your data set. But if you just split uh, your data set into a training part and a test part, uh, okay, there is also a problem because we train models. We want to evaluate how the model will perform on unseen or unknown data set. If you just uh, split a data set into two subsets, then there's a problem. You can train and the test, but where is the unknown data set? You, you how to very, very data, you are the, no, okay, we cannot do it. So the practice to do it is 
split your data into three different parts. Take a part of it for train your, to train your model and validate your uh, models on a validation set big part. Because in your models, there are parameters you need to turn. You also have hyperparameters you you cannot turn it. You you just need you can just set those values in the beginning. You don't know how to what is the best hyperparameters, just like this one. Suppose K is your hyperparameter. How do you know what is the best K I should use? Okay, so you need to try this to try another. But and you cannot turn it's in tune it during your training process. So in this case, it is okay. You don't know what is the best K use. So you use your training set and to try to try. Okay, you find on the validation set. Okay, K is good for twenty or uh, fifty, etc. Okay, then there is a test set you never see, your model never see. And then you can use your trend model on the test set, then report your result. It will be fair. Okay. So in if you read uh, many um, machine, I should say deep learning method, you will see a keyword, five-fold cross-variation. It means what? Given a data set, you split your data set into training and uh, test. And from your training set, you pick up a partial of it as your validation. So in this case, the first four folds are training. The fifth fold is the validation set. But however, you can change length, right? So you can change your validation fold as the fourth fold and the third fold, etc. So this is why cross validation because you pick up a different uh, uh, training set. So that also a uh, validation set. So that all of your training set will be a validation set for certain training uh, phase. Again, if you are interested, oh, this um, section is mentioned in the reference book uh, 5.3. Okay, it's also the same, very brief. And uh, but however, uh, test book uh, there's advantages. You can take a look at it again if you need some. Precise description. So, for example, the three sentences are cropped from the textbook. So it easy it clearly tell you what is um, hyperparameter. However, is the, the values you cannot change or adapt during your learning algorithm. Okay, and uh, typically we use five-fold correlation uh, protocol, but some people may prefer 10 photos, so this is just a typical practice. Okay, the validation set is used for what to train the hyperparameters. Okay, and uh, the book also provides you some benefit. It clearly shows what is the mathematical definition for k fold cross Validation. So it is a very interesting function that k fold cross variation. Okay. So here, the the key point is here. We split uh, the data into k fold, and uh, for each fold, uh, we calculate the loss from the uh, variation set. And then we sum the loss together from the um, all of the cross variation. So 
from the destination, you can know what is the best parameter for the training set. Okay, this turns to be the minimum summed loss for the cross validation. Okay, so Justin Johnson also mentioned a property of k nearest neighbor. It is the universal approximation. If you have a lot of training examples or instances, then you can use k nearest neighbor to approximate the real function or the real, uh, say, the properties you want to uh, imitate. Okay, so this is the example. If uh, there are some training points there, and we use and there is a real uh, true function as the in blue, then given those training points, we can use nearly neighbor neighbor function to approximate the true function. If we have more training points, then this is a result. So it can, the k nearest neighbor, or near, just a near nearest neighbor function, it, is, it doesn't have any parameter, but this is very useful. But however, there is a problem is, um, I should say a problem, it's a property of the image. So we know images is consistent uh, composed by a lot of pixels, and a lot there are many pixels on an image, and uh, for every pixel there are many possible values. Let's see a very simple case, just a image with 32 by 32 pixels, and every pixel only has two possible values, either black or white. Then how many possibilities are the small images can be? So if we calculate uh, the uh, exponential values here, so it's around 10 to the order of 308. So it's a very, very high dimensional, dimensional uh, space, okay? And uh, let's see the number of elementary particles in the universe. So it's just a 10 to the 97. So for very small image, the dimension is very, very, very high. Okay, so let's take a look. This is just a one dimensional function. If we want to create a function, works for a very small patch. The, di the dimension will be extremely high. So how many of instances you need to create uh, the approximation function. So theoretically, k nearest neighbor can be used to approximate any function. But in practice, because of the dimensionality curves, there are some difficulty to do it. Okay, and uh, there is another problem of uh, k nearest neighbor. So for the four images, from this original image. So let's go back to this. Uh, okay. uh, where is my. Okay. So to, uh, okay, let's go back uh, here. So here, on our 2D space, you see all of the points on the circle has the same distance from the original, right? So it is an easy concept. But uh, for images, this is the case. Imagine the original image is at the origin. And uh, the three images are on the um, circle or on the uh, square, no, no matter it's what, okay? Do you, do you feel which one is the closest one to the origin? Of course, it is not a box. Oh, oh I should say, 
I don't think the box one will be has the same distance from the original. But however, if we just use Kenny's neighbor and desired distance, the distance doesn't match our intuition. Oh, so that's the problem of uh, image. Uh, so so that's the reason why Kenny's neighbor is not directly used for image classification. But uh, convolution neural networks has a very interesting property. If we use convolution neural network to extract a feature, then K nearest neighbor or just the nearest neighbor works well. This is the instance. For this is the input image. If we extract the feature using convolution network and find its nearest neighbor, is uh, the those are the results. And if we use a trend uh, neural network, conversion network uh, to extract the features of this baby, then the nearest neighbors in a data set, uh, for, okay, will be those. Okay, so it's a very interesting property. It, it means convolutional networks can extract. Uh, useful or effective feature matching our human intuitive or perception. Right, so let's stop here. And uh, next week, uh, uh, you are going to present your homework two, right? Okay, homework two. Uh, okay, so this is a friendly, kindly remind, remind, reminder, okay? So, of course, you can keep doing your homework one and improve it and show us your new result. Okay, so the restriction is use any video or images captured by a camera. So uh, that's the lecture today. So see you next week.